States. Now let's turn our attention back to the technology space and in particular Cap Gemini in India. I'm very pleased to welcome this afternoon Srinivas uh, Kandula, CEO of uh, Cap Gemini in India, joining us in our Mumbai studios. A very good afternoon and thank you for joining us. I'm going to get straight to it. In April this year, the Cap Gemini chairman and chief executive Paul Hemelin said about India in the Cap Gemini universe, India is the backbone of the group. Um, I'm sure you'll endorse that, but just take stock of where Cap Gemini is in India, starting, of course, with a revenue number that you're clocking. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, of course, so if I have to talk about revenue numbers in India, that would be very insignificant because India is not a primary market for us from a revenue perspective. As yes, Paul has clearly articulated that India is the backbone of Cap Gemini and uh, it is epicenter of execution. We have over 91,000 employees out of 180,000 uh, people working in India, and uh, we deliver about 2,000 plus projects, uh, support all the clients globally, and a lot of innovation, digital and cloud foundation work is happening. Yeah, as Capgemini India is indeed uh, is very essential part and backbone of uh, Capgemini Global. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm just wondering, uh, you're talking about ramping up your R&D services in India at a time when perhaps the whole idea of India as, a, as an IT, uh, you know, services uh, provider via the offshore model is being questioned a little bit. How do you juxtapose those two thoughts? No, I think, uh, you see, India has started off uh, working on IT services say, about four and a half decades back. I think we have seen many models and India historically has contributed significantly to the R&D and innovation of IT products and IT service models. So I don't see any contradiction between these two and with the growing startup culture and number of products that across the space number of institutions are working. Uh, so Capgemini also would like to leverage and a uh, great amount of work is being done in the area of digital cloud foundation as well as in the traditional models that uh, we are working uh, to automate uh, some of uh, the tasks, uh, some of the operations which we have. I think I, I see a great harmonization between these two. Okay, let's just talk a little bit about your R&D, your innovation center. Uh, just what are some of the metrics associated with that innovation center? How many employees are you going to have working out there? What is the profile of activities that they're going to be focusing on? You see, uh, one way it may sound very philosophical, but each one of our employees we consider working on innovation. Because our employee engagement metrics essentially measure the innovative capability of our employee. Having said that, there are employees exclusively dedicated to the innovation and innovation labs. Their number is about uh, 6 to 7 percent of our total workforce. We have a number of labs across all our development centers and we work with a number of clients and end products and their end services to their clients. The way we measure the success of uh, uh, these innovation, unlike in the product company space, in the services companies, that how much uh, we are able to contribute to the revenue generation of our clients out of enhanced services. And we have seen our number of uh, our clients that they are able to not only leverage that our participation in their innovation, our participation in their IP and then uh, development of special products, increase of uh, their uh, bottom line, their revenues. These are the, some of the metrics we measure. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, the iGate integration, I'm sure you were anticipating that question. Just uh, take stock of how it's uh, progressing and, uh, y you know, um, whether or not you've been able to sort of preserve all of the iGate business. Yeah, I think uh, we consider uh, the integration uh, has been very successful. We just completed phase one of integration by 31st of January this year. That we have combined uh, the sales engines of both companies. 
and all the i get 33000 employees have been mapped against various business units of cap gemini and uh, we were able to cross leverage the capabilities and selling uh, uh, bandwidth of uh, both the companies and we had few wins and we have not seen any attrition either in the employees or in our clients and it has been quite successful uh, that either i get i tops model or it is outcome based pricing model so all these are successfully integrated into the uh, cap gemini business model and we got into the phase 2 that uh, where we will see the significant integration in terms of the processes and systems which will be done and completed by june 30th we consider uh, this uh, exercise has been pretty successful so far i'm going to come back to a subject that we uh, skirted at the start of our conversation which is the challenge to the it services model to your mind what are the main challenges will this will this model be sort of you know uh, broken and reassembled what do you see happening you see as i said that uh, the it services the existing business model has been there for three decades yes i think now the time has come for some kind of transformation in the model hmm. we had evolved from a staffing business to a project based to a global delivery model to now to an outcome based uh, business model and uh, you might have seen that lot of it services companies talking about greater automation competitiveness and replacing the existing uh, linear business model where we count head count uh, at the same with as that of uh, the revenues i think those will undergo definitely a change and you will see from 3 to 5 years now that it services business model no longer one will be able to predict their revenues using head count right. as a key parameter and how much they will be able to innovate how much they have automated how much they will be able to provide to our clients in highly highly uh, what we call robotics business model i think that is what is going to happen in the coming 3 to 5 years well srinivas kandula ceo of cap gemini india i'm going to leave it at that thanks very much for joining us this afternoon on ndtv profit always interesting to get a you know a, a bird's eye view in a sense uh, on what the future looks like uh, thanks very much uh, we're going to take a very quick break